Hey guys, this is going to be a very unusual vlog. I got my uh, announcer's mic here, and I'm going to be screencasting with this picture-in-picture. Uh, picture. I'm using my cinema camera here to, to uh, have a good... Anyway, I'll stop. All right, so let's talk about Python. There's a couple articles I want to address that just came out. One from InfoWorld and one from uh, Fossbytes, which I don't know. This came just in my feed, so I figure I would comment on these things. Now, before I get into this, uh, let me just give you the lead. The lead is that Python continues to increase in its dominance as a language. Not the most dominant. It's right up there, though, with the big boys, Java, C++, C, and Python. But there's a bunch of lessons to be learned from the Python Ascension. And some other little things I'm going to slip in there. And hopefully the big picture discussion is going to resonate with you guys. So let me just go back, way back in time, to my site, KillerPHP.com. So I put up KillerPHP in, I guess, about 2006 to um, teach PHP to web designer types, non-programmer types. I thought there was a need for that, not just for PHP, for every language, but I did with PHP for a bunch of reasons, which I won't get into now. So you see on the screen in front of you an old article from August 2006. Now, a few years ago, I changed it to HTTPS because Google wanted HTTPS, and I lost all my rankings on the shares, but this was a very big article at the time, and this was very controversial, this article, because way back in 2006, at the height of Ruby mania, of Ruby madness, I uh, went out there and made a bold prediction, which very few people thought. The PHP community, they were cowering in the corner, like, oh no, this Ruby's going to kill us. But I said, no chance. And you're right here, right? Uh, with the recent rise in popularity of the Ruby programming language, largely driven by the excellent but not perfect web framework Rails, I've noticed a little fear in the air, fear on the part of PHP people, the PHP community. Will Ruby kill PHP? So I definitely said, no, it's not, no chance. So I went into all the reasons, um, and I'm not going to go over them here because it's old news. What I want you to take away from this is I wrote this in 2006, but guess what? Not the only article I wrote on uh, Ruby versus PHP. I wrote several pieces. Let's go into archive. 2000, let's go back. Uh, let's go way back. What did I search for Ruby? Yeah, way back. Way back. Lots of articles on Ruby. 2007, 2000, you know. These are all articles that mention Ruby. Uh, evangelizing PHP. Uh, reactions to keyword. Uh, what else? Uh, top reasons to learn PHP, blah, blah. So way back in 2006, I was able to identify, and I publicly stated, and I got a lot of heat for these articles, especially ones where I was bashing Rails. Um, I got a lot of heat because I said that PHP was going to it's going to be strong and dominant, and Rails had some, and Ruby had some shortcomings that I thought that in the end would would uh, take it down, and that PHP would still be around after Ruby. And people thought I was crazy at the time. And uh, maybe they still think I'm crazy, but let's look at some recent data. Now, this is, by the way, a vlog more or less about Python. But I just want, again, and that broader point I want you to take away. So when you're looking at, when you look at charts and statistics and so forth, you have to look at a bunch of things. You know, you can, the samples, where you get your samples from, how big the samples are. A lot of things that you do in surveys, in studies, can skew the data one way or another. So... The larger the data set, the larger the amount of people you pull from different parts, different areas, different demos, the more accurate the pitch you're going to get. That being said, we have a couple of articles here which cite um, rankings from different organizations. So you're right here in this one, we have the already tops in the IEEE, the PYPL rankings. Python soon could soon conquer the T-I-O-B-E index as well. So let's just scroll down. I'm going to give you an overview. You can look up these articles on your own time if you want to really get into detail. So here are the top languages. When was this article written, by the way? August 2018. So August 6th, just, uh, you know, mm -hmm. yesterday. So here are the rankings. So number one, Java. Number two, C. Number three, C++. Number four, Python. Now, 
let me comment on that. When Java came out back in the 90s, and I was around, I was a young nerdling at that time, and I can tell you that the C++ people were hammering Java, and they were giving all kinds of legitimate reasons why C++ was a better language than Java. Java was slow, it was young, it was unproven. All people did with Java at the time was create applets, which were like little mini apps that just ran in web browsers. And yeah, they, they really took a hammering to Java. They did not like Java. Much in the same way when I suggested a month ago where if Flutter lives up to the Google Flutter framework for building mobile applications cross-platform, I said if Flutter lives up to expectations, it was going to hammer native languages like Swift and Kotlin and Java. And people got pretty angry about that. Not everybody, I think the majority of the articles or in my, excuse me, comments were, in, were uh, backing me. That being said, this is parallels, the whole Flutter versus Swift, Flutter versus Java, Flutter versus, you know, or, or PhoneGap, non-native solutions for writing mobile apps versus native is very much reminiscent of Java versus C, C++. At that time, the Java, the C++ people were hammering the Java people or Java language. Now, many years later, almost 20 years later, over 20 years later, Java's king. Java's king on this rating here. So it's, uh, you know, number one, down here, uh, Python is king, but Java is still in the top four. Interesting. So another one, Java is number two, you know. Um, yeah, now, that's pretty cool. Let's go to this other article right here. Uh, Python bags first position in EE and w IEE spectrum programming language ranking. So let's scroll down. Here it is. Python's number one, C++, C, Java, C Sharp, PHP. Notice PHP, look at that, PHP above JavaScript. Now people are going, what? That's impossible, JavaScript. In this particular ranking, PHP is above JavaScript. Uh, go, now, I don't see Swift, and I don't see Ruby. Look at that, Ruby's not here. But that's just one ranking. Let's go to this article where they have a few rankings. Let's see what we got in this. Okay, Java's number one, C, C++, Python, Visual Basic.net, which is basically C Sharp. Oh, look, number seven, PHP. Again, it's above JavaScript. Unbelievable. Oh, look at SQL. Huh. Um, I, don't see, I don't see Ruby in that list. That's interesting. Where's Ruby? Where's Ruby? Okay, let's scroll down to another one. Uh, Python's number one, C++, C, Java. You notice these four, are, they're always they're fighting each other for number one, right? C Sharp, damn, PHP again. P Dirty PHP is still in the top 10. It's beating JavaScript again. Uh, where's Ruby? I don't see Ruby. Or Swift, I don't see Swift. Okay, let's go, next one. All right, Python, number one. Java, number two. Ah, JavaScript. Finally, JavaScript beats PHP. Well, but PHP is right behind it, number four. Not bad. Now, PHP, in this case, beats C Sharp, C++, R, Objectives. Oh, here's, hey, Swift made it. Swift made it in the top 10 in this particular ranking in 2018, July. So, not bad. I don't see Ruby. I don't see Ruby. Now, what did I say back in 2008, in 2006? Ruby, Paper Dragon, uh, you know, blah, blah, blah. So what's the larger picture to take away? Number one, you'll see that the top four languages are typically Python, C++, C, Java. Short, right after that, you're going to see C Sharp, PHP, JavaScript. These are the top languages of our time. Um, let's look at this here. Again, it's Java, C++, C, Python, C Sharp, PHP, JavaScript. So you, you get the idea of where the action is. Now, what's significant about this is that we're seeing for the last 10, 15 years, the same languages are holding strong for the most part. Java, C++, C, Python. Python has risen quite a bit. Uh, C Sharp, Java, PHP, JavaScript, SQL is usually in there. Um, when you're evaluating languages, when you're evalu evaluating technology, you can't just get caught up into a myopic view, tech view. You can't just look at it with nerd eyes. You have to consider business implications as well. And in all honesty, it's hard for people who've never been in business, who doesn't don't have a business sense, for them to be able to identify those little elements that I saw in PHP and Java, that's why I learned Java, 
back in the day, these little elements that um, I knew that was going to provide a foundation for these languages long term. And that's and these elements that languages like Ruby lacked, even though Ruby has a lot of excellent, excellent qualities about it, the fact that it has fallen off and PHP has not should tell you something. So when looking at languages, you have to consider not just the technical end of things, you have to consider the business implications. One thing I've learned over the years, uh, if a language is easier, if the language is easier to write, easier to learn, easier to deploy, even though it might not be as fast, it might not be as performant, it may not have the flexibility of other languages that are harder, that ease of use and ease of implementation is going to beat the superior speed a lot of the times or the superior elegance of the language. So Ruby, as an example, very ele elegant language, really nice, really nice, but it had certain key elements about it that I saw back in 06. I said, you know, it's going to nicheify. It's going to go into niche. Not a criticism of the language. I wish it didn't, ha I wish it wouldn't, uh, I wish it wasn't lacking in those elements because in many respects it had certain things about it that I liked over PHP, but I liked over Java, but I liked over JavaScript and other languages that I programmed in. But at the end of the day, they didn't have it. They weren't ever, ever, ever able to rectify it, and thus it's fallen into a niche now. Although when people point out, yes, there's jobs here in Ruby, and that's also true. There's jobs in classic VB as well. There's jobs in classic ASP, which was retired in 1998, I think, by Microsoft. Nonetheless, here are uh, some credible, seemingly some credible surveys and seen others where you see consistently Java, C, C++, Python in the top tier. And right under that, you'll see C, C Sharp, PHP, JavaScript in the top tier. And then everybody else, sort of, you know, all the other different languages will come in and out depending on circumstances. So consider business considerations. So that's why Python, though at runtime, when it's actually running Python code, doesn't run nearly as fast as Java, it doesn't run nearly as fast as PHP. It certainly doesn't run as fast as C++ or C. It doesn't run as fast as C Sharp, as far as I know. It doesn't run, uh, Python doesn't run as fast as Swift, that's for sure. But because of uh, its flexibility, because it's easy, easy to learn, because it's cross-platform, it has all kinds of great things going for it that uh, ensures that I, I'm convinced, I know, that Python in 10 years from now, 15 years from now, will still be widely used because it's so widely used today. It's diverse use case. Python's diverse use case guarantee that it's going to be around for quite a bit. As uh, whereas with PHP, because it's so easy, because it's so widely used, because it's quick to deploy, because it's fast, because it's just practical, it's going to be. It's not. It's not nearly as flexible and diverse. PHP is not nearly as flexible and diverse as Python, but it's just got a lot of a lot of other things going for it that really appeal to small business owners. Which, by the way, eighty percent of all jobs are driven by small business. Keep that in mind. So there you go. I think. I hope the general. The general principle behind this vlog comes through. I'm not trying to bash on Ruby. I'm not trying to bash on this language or that. What to take away is that Python's diversity of technology, of capability, its flexibility, it's easy to use, all these qualities. It's not the best at any one thing, but it's really good at a bunch of things. And that means it's going to be around, it's going to be viable for a long, long time. As, you know, look at Java, you know. And... Uh, if you look at these uh, these ratings, you'll see that PHP has actually gone up a bit in some of them over the last year, believe it or not. So I mentioned PHP over and over again because it's one it's it's like it's like the redheaded stepchild of the programming world. It's, it's really strange. People don't like it, um, and it's because of what PHP used to be. They're sort of it's like looking at uh, iPhone one, comparing it to the latest Samsung S nine, and going look how sh look how crappy iPhones are. Compared to the S9, Sam's, you know, you can't compare old, 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 old PHP versus what's out now. PHP 7 is far superior to PHP uh, 4 and 3. And most people who criticize PHP, they think it's PHP 3 still. So keep that in mind. That said, 
All these languages are viable, by the way. All these languages are viable. It just depends on what type of programming you want to do, what your personal interests are. That's really what it comes down to. Uh, so if you're trying to decide which language to learn, don't fret over it because you learn one to, to jump into the other. It's not a big deal. The hardest part about learning how to program is learning how to program, learning that first language. Because all these languages, with the exception of uh, SQL and assembly, all these languages share very, very similar properties. Java and C Sharp are very close. Like C Sharp is just basically a clone of Java. Uh, C, C++, they're the closest to each other. They're the most different, if you will, from the rest. They're the most different, but not totally different. They're very similar. Python, uh, Visual Basic, and C Sharp are almost identical. They're literally the same language, just the code looks different, but it's the same language. I've written code in both. PHP, uh, yeah, it's JavaScript. Uh, again, they're different, but they're, if you learn JavaScript for you to learn PHP, they're pretty easy. If you learn Java for you to learn C Sharp, PHP, JavaScript, Python, pretty easy. I think you're getting the idea. So don't fret. I, I'll leave with that. If you're trying to decide which language to learn and you're, you're, you're pulling your hair out, you have coder's pain trying to figure out what language should I learn? If I learn the wrong language, will I be doomed? No, you won't, because if, let's say, you learn C-sharp and you find out there's only jobs in uh, Java, for you to learn Java will take just a few days because you've already done the hard work learning C-sharp. Same thing, if you learn JavaScript and, and you go out there as a freelancer and you find out that uh, everybody's using PHP WordPress and they, gotta, they want PHP-based shopping carts that you want to update and stuff, for you to learn PHP would be pretty easy if you already know JavaScript. I hope that makes sense. So there you go. Python scales the language popularity charts. And apparently it's going up still. And that's, again, because, you know, AI, machine learning, uh, server automation, it's used all over the place. All right, I hope that helps. Ciao.